Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are talking about our next tropical cyclone that is going to be heading from the Atlantic into portions of the Caribbean and potentially bring United States impacts. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups down below. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know what do you think this storm will get to as far as status? Which category do you think it'll just be a tropical storm let me know in the comments down below and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video now let's get into our hurricane douglas forecast map real quick i've been getting tons of comments from people wanting me to feature this storm so it is going to be a hurricane it is going to impact areas in especially northern hawaii there the northern islands but every single island in hawaii will feel impact so please 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 be careful you can see the reds there feature hurricane warnings the blues have tropical storm warnings meaning you're going to get tropical storm status winds tons of rain and wind is expected so please be safe if you are in the hawaii islands there all right now let's look at our low pressure center for gonzalo quickly and you can see it is over south america it went much further south than what we anticipated and therefore it has weakened significantly and it does no longer pose a threat for the United States, which is extremely good news. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're finally going to talk about our tropical invest in the Atlantic. All right, and now here we are taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for this Invest 92 L, and this one has the most potential out of any of the storms we've seen so far, in my opinion. Gonzalo did a really nice job of clearing up the dry air. Obviously, it ate away at Gonzalo. We got very, very close to Category 1 status with, with Gonzalo. I kind of thought there was probably like a, a more chance than not that we would see weak Category 1 status. It didn't end up reaching that, so that was a little bit of a bust on my part. Uh, however, it did end up being a very strong tropical storm and then weakening from that point on. Let's go ahead. So a 60% chance for the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Let's move on and take a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And look at that. We have a 90% chance of development within this red area. So pretty much the National Hurricane Center is saying, look, this one's going to develop. Uh, we pretty much know that within the fi next five days, we are going to be looking at a tropical depression, probably tropical storm too, and possibly a hurricane. It's really uncertain at this point, but we will continue to track this daily for you guys, just as we've done so far. If you don't like tropical content, you've probably been hating the last week or so because I think we've done like seven tropics updates in a row, so you're probably hating it, but it is the biggest thing going on right now. We just have storm after storm after storm right now, so I just have to keep updating you guys because every single day there continues to be more and more information here. Maybe this will be the last storm we have for a little bit, and then we can start touching on some other topics, but for now, the tropics seems to be the most major uh, thing going on out there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, things like that, the intensity guidance, and some of our um, ensemble models guidance as well. Then we're going to get into what the GFS and the Canadian model think is going to happen with this one. Then we will get into our official direct weather cone forecast, and then eventually the comment of the day. So here it is on satellite imagery. As you can see, it does need to do some more organizing before it could be a tropical depression or a tropical storm but there is some taller thunderstorms around so we are going to see this one come together over the next day or two most likely uh, let's go ahead and look at the spaghetti model guidance and as you can see uh, they actually have very good agreement i've seen people in the weather community touching on this but the spaghetti models so far have very very good agreement on this one which is pretty much the opposite of how our previous storms have been does this mean that it will take the track that all the models are saying no, we see this happen all the time where it'll come, they will come in an agreement on one track and then it completely does something else. So past about, you know, four days out, pretty much the certainty starts to really lower by that point. What do we know at this point? Well, it's probably going to be heading uh, towards the west. Basically, we don't know if it'll go south or north of Haiti and Dominican Republic. It's leaning towards north, but I could still see the potential for it to go south of those regions. If it goes north, it has more chance for development. If it goes south, it will interact with more dry air, and it might suffer the same fate as Gonzalo if it does so. But if it goes north of these islands, it's going to interact with more moist air, warmer waters, uh, and could develop further, I would say, if it does end up taking that track. Here's another uh, spaghetti model. I, uh, this is a lot of the same models, but this is just from a different source and as you can see uh, very tightly knit like I said before this goes up to seven days out which is 168 hours out and as you can see they are very close together there they do think that it will either hit Dominican Republic and Haiti or go just north but again this does not mean it's impossible for it to go south of these regions 
but if it does go north of these regions, it will have an easier time developing most likely. Though, if it interacts with land, that could definitely hurt this storm's development moving forward. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that intensity guidance, some other spaghetti models, and then we're going to take a look at what the GFS and Canadian model have to say as far as where they think this one's going to go. Now here's the intensity guidance. As you can see, every single model that has hopped on board with this storm so far does have this one at least reaching tropical storm status. Half of the models have this one kind of peaking out and leveling out at a moderate to strong tropical storm. Uh, or I would say two out of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe about a third actually there. And then we see a majority of the models do have this one heading towards category one, potentially category two, category three status. We saw this with, with Gonzalo two as well, uh, but it just never ended up happening. So take this one with a grain of salt. This is a very wide uh, range of how intense this one could get. And we're really just going to need to move forward before we talk about intensity. And at this point, intensity doesn't really matter. It's more about what it's going to do later on, which is where the uncertainty is. Uh, so really, we're going to need to update you guys on this one in the future to give you guys a more certain outlook about what we're expecting from this 92L invest here. Here's the GEFS, which is our GFS Ensemble Models Spaghetti Model Track. Woo, and this one is lo not looking good on the GEFS as of right now. Look at that, guys. It. Uh, what you need to pay attention to is the colors as well, not only the track. Obviously, this is very uh, interesting that this one has a near East Coast track, maybe a little bit out to sea. Though, again, this could really fluctuate. This could co uh, skirt the East Coast. This one could be further out to sea. This one could still go south of Dominican Republic and Haiti, like I said, and maybe enter the Gulf uh, as one member shows there. But the colors also mean a lot here. Uh, if it's in the yellows, it's at 1,000 uh, to 990 millibars, anything lower, you see the color table on the right. So we see a lot of reds in there, which means 970 to 980. That would be a very strong low pressure system. And the average pressure there, if it was to hit the East Coast or be just offshore of the East Coast here on the GEFS model is 984 millibars. That's a strong low pressure system. And that's very interesting to see it's showing that. Here's the Canadian ensemble model quickly. As you can see, it's a lot less certain, but it has a similar outlook a similar color and similar track to the GEFS model. So we'll need to see if this trend continues at a potential East Coast uh, um, impact or maybe off offshore of the East Coast where it doesn't really have impacts. That might become the most likely track moving forward. We will have to see over the next three days. I think these tracks will become a lot more certain. Again, I'm going to be updating you guys probably daily on this storm. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at what the, GEF, the GFS and the Canadian model have to say. Um, and then we will take a look at our direct weather cone forecast for this one. Now this is as of this morning. Uh, so we can see where that low pressure center is located. This is our winds in knots. So you can see it does not have any strong winds yet. Let's move it towards Wednesday afternoon. I know we're taking a giant jump here, but we see those greens arrive. That probably means this model thinks it would be a tropical storm by this point. Very interesting stuff. Uh, and by time we're reaching maybe about, uh, I would say Friday at about 8 p.m., you do see that this model, the GFS, thinks it will be north of Dominican Republic and it will be a 982 millibar low pressure center. And we see a lot of those reds in there, indicating maybe approaching a, a, a category one hurricane, maybe even a category one hurricane by this point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our Canadian model briefly on the same frame and look at how close that is to being the same track. Obviously, the intensity is a little bit different. The, G the GEM model or Canadian model here thinks it might be a little bit weaker. Uh, however, we do see that this one uh, is in a very similar location. Let's move it towards about 8 p.m. on Sunday, next Sunday, so seven days from now. And you can see this one has taken a northern turn and it is heading uh, offshore of the east coast here. Uh, and then as we move towards about 8 p.m. on Tuesday, way too far out to be certain here. I just wanted to show this because, again, this is obviously on the table considering a model is showing it. I think you should take this one with a grain of salt, though, because this is a very, um, very aggressive outlook for this one. But it's just offshore of North Carolina, and we see these upper pinks developing, which is indicating maybe a category two or three hurricane just offshore of North Carolina there with a 964 millibar low pressure system. And I'm saying take this one with a grain of salt because I guarantee you by the time our 18Z GFS is coming out, it will look different than this. So the, uh, the certainty is extremely low at this point. And then here's our Canadian model by the end of the run, again, by 8 p.m. on Tuesday. And it shows a very similar outlook here, a very strong hurricane with a 971 millibar low pressure system offshore of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. Take it with a giant grain of salt. 
This is a very low certainty type thing. I'm just showing you guys this because again, the possibility is on the table. All right, now let's get into our direct weather cone forecast here. And this is our, our next five days. We are lowering it to five days because we saw some issues beyond the five day uh, range here. We, we used to do seven days, but the accuracy really dropped off after that five day mark. So we've decided to lower it. Hopefully you guys are going to come behind us with that decision and agree that it was probably for the best. Uh, and and really, it's just it becomes a lot more uncertain. We might do something where we do add the seven day forecast, but add the disclaimer that it does uh, feature a little bit less accuracy, obviously, as you get to the six, seven day range uh, later on. We might try to implement that in some way. But for now, we're moving it to a five day uh, outlook. As you can see, we have featured the uh, possibility that this one goes south of Dominican Republic. And actually, quite frankly, I'm keeping it 50-50 because I'm not really buying into the models yet. As of tomorrow, we might switch this and really shift it north if they continue with this north of Dominican Republic type um, solution. But really, I'm keeping it 50-50, as you can see here, uh, that it goes south of Dominican Republic or north of Dominican Republic in its lifetime here. The interesting thing to note, again, I want to mention this, is I think it would do a lot better if it goes north of Dominican Republic. If it goes south of Dominican Republic, it could suffer the same fate as Gonzalo, or, or even if it hits Dominican Republic, it would experience a lot of weakening. It could redevelop after that point, but really, um, that would not be good if, for it if it hit those mountains there. That would really just kill this one off, which would be good news for the United States, obviously. All right, again, I will be updating you guys daily on this one, so be on the lookout for that if you are interested. This one eventually could pose a threat to the United States, as you've seen from the models here, but it also could go out to sea. I want to mention that possibility as well. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is going to happen with this invest offshore of the coast of Africa? And Anna Marie Malto said, the invest off the coast of Africa will most likely become a hurricane probably within the next week or two weeks, possibly reaching category two status. Very interesting and bold prediction there. And it's seeming like that that is potentially becoming an option here. I would say it might become a tropical storm and we don't know for sure if it'll become a hurricane, uh, but I do like the boldness in your prediction. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.